it was on September 11th, 1984, that uh, Pope John Paul II came to Montreal. At that time, I was uh, articling, preparing to be sworn in as a member of the Quebec Bar, and I was working for uh, uh, William Tetley. William Tetley was a professor of international law at McGill University at the time. He had been a member of uh, the cabinet under Robert Bourassa. He was a real expert in his field, and I was very, very happy to be able to work with him um, at that time, and uh, indeed to article under uh, such an eminent scholar and uh, international lawyer. Now, uh, Bill Tetley was an Anglican, very much involved in his parish in town of Mount Royal, St. Peter's, and um, I didn't know quite how to approach him about getting if you wish permission to take leave of work to go to Jerry Park to attend the uh, public mass that was being presided by uh, John Paul II. But in our conversation, he mentioned how much he admired John Paul II, whom he saw as a man who, of integrity, a man of vision, and a real leader. And so that gave me an opening, and I asked him if it would be okay with him if I were to take the day off to head out to Jarry Park and to attend the uh, open air mass. Should point out that Jerry Park also had a special meaning for me because uh, I had had the uh, privilege of uh, uh, going with my father to the first Expos game. Um, and so being there reminded me of my, of that special time with my own father. And uh, also it brought to mind an experience in 1974 when I was in uh, Rome in the um, wonderful uh, open space uh, in front of St. Peter's Cathedral. And uh, I heard uh, Paul VI speak and receive a blessing uh, along with several tens of thousands of other pilgrims um, in St. Peter's Square. And strangely enough, because it was uh, uh, the grounds of Jerry Park that day were so muddy and broken up by the steps of so many thousands of feet, uh, it reminded me of uh, standing in the Maidan in Calcutta. So uh, that experience was very rich for me. I remember John Paul II, who was just a tiny, tiny figure on the... Uh, stage way, uh, uh, way beyond where I was standing. It's a tiny figure, but he spoke about um, Montreal, spoke about the mission that had been entrusted to the founders of Ville-Marie. Um, Paul Chomédé de Maisonneuve, uh, Jeanne Mance, uh, and also Marguerite Bourgeois. Uh, and I had a strong sense of how Montreal was founded on a vision, a, a vision that uh, embodied a mission entrusted to its founders and that had been passed on through the generations to the people of Montreal and uh, of this part of the world. So that was, I think, a very powerful experience. I also recall a little later on that day that uh, John Paul II would uh, be at the Olympic Stadium it would be 60,000 young people. I was not going to go to that uh, event, but I remember how the media covered that event. 60,000 people that were enthusiastic. Céline Dion uh, sang her famous song, La Colombe, and there was absolutely remarkable choreography uh, carried out by several thousand young people that had seemed to very much impress uh, Jean-Paul II. Now, Jean-Paul II's uh, visit to Montreal was part of a, a larger pilgrimage to Canada and I can recall uh, some very very important words important declaration that John Paul II made when he went to Midland Ontario where he said the following Christ in the members of his body is Amerindian this message was of extreme importance for the native peoples of Canada, the 
Aboriginal people of Canada that were gathered um, at Midland and who followed this pilgrimage by Jean Paul II to Canada. It was a way by which John Paul II was affirming their identity, affirming their culture, recognizing the depth of their spirituality. This was an important event for Aboriginal people in Canada, where somebody of a real international stature was recognizing them, affirming the gifts that they brought to the church, to the universal church, and to the people of Canada. Subsequently, John Paul II was hoping to go to Fort Simpson in Nunavut. But the, as the plane approached Fort Simpson, there was a, a snowstorm and the pilot decided that it was just not safe to uh, uh, land in Fort Simpson. And so you can imagine the great sadness and disappointment experienced by the Aboriginal communities that were waiting for this, uh, this imp important international figure. But to John Paul II's credit, three years later, in 1987, he did return to Fort Simpson. And that was something that was really important for Aboriginal people throughout Canada, especially those who identify themselves as Christians and particularly as Catholics. John Paul II was a man who had a vision, a prophet in his way, and also was a man of integrity. He kept his promises. And that was very important for Aboriginal people. Aboriginal people that we meet here in Montreal in our diocese, after all, a large part of the Aboriginal population of Quebec lives in urban areas, particularly in Montreal. And so this is, I think, an important event for all of us. Thank you.